Okay guys, so you set up your trade copier, you're looking to trade with your personal accounts or your funded accounts, what do you need to look out for? So I've done videos previously on how I actually set up trade copiers. One of my most popular videos is how to set up and how I use trade copiers with my funded accounts. And over the past few months, it's been quite difficult with a lot of trade copiers because there's new trading platforms, there's been MT4 issues, and it's been quite tricky. So I have flicked between a few different trade copiers and you know with Traders Connect, Social Trader Tools, both of those uh, copiers, and I did have some issues. So I'm basically gonna go over the issues which I've actually had and how you can actually look out for and not have the same issues that I actually had. So the main issue which I actually found was the difference in price between the different brokers or the different prop firms. Because unless you're trading with multiple accounts with the same firm, that if that is the case, that's completely fine because you're going to have very similar price action. The markets are going to be identical on the, the two different accounts because you're trading on the same broker. But if you're trading one with Admiral Markets, for example, which is one of the brokers I use, one with Axie, they're going to have different prices. If you're using True Forex funds and FTMO, the prices are going to be slightly different. So you need to be aware of this when you're actually using a trade copier. This is more apparent when you're actually using limits and tight stop losses because the difference in price means that there's obviously going to be a difference in spread too and some trades will be tagged into a limit and some trades won't some trades will be stopped out some trades won't so i got to the stage where i was trading with five six accounts on the trade copier and obviously my master account that's the one i was mainly focusing on so that trade would get tagged in and we go and hit the take profit then i go to check the trade copier stats to see okay how are all the accounts doing and then three of the accounts might not have actually been tagged into that trade. So if you are getting you know, entries on Wix or entries that are you know, like considered sniper entries, it can be quite difficult. So half of the accounts were up 3%, half the accounts didn't even get tagged into the trade. Again, I've had it where all the trades get tagged in, goes close to the stop loss, but doesn't hit the stop loss on the master account or on a couple of the accounts, but a few of the accounts get stopped out. And then if that trade goes to take profit, half the accounts you're making 3% profit half the accounts you're losing 1%. So then there is a 4% difference in the account balance of your accounts. So some will be maybe up 5% and the others will be up 1% or maybe some will be in drawdown, some will be in profit. So you need to be careful and just monitor it based off of this. So if you're noticing that there are a set few amount of firms that are not getting tagged into trades or that have a wider spread, then I feel like the best thing to do is have these on a separate copier. So you have those separately, or maybe you trade those separately and just manage them with multiple MetaTrader terminals just to ensure that you are getting tagged into trades. And maybe you have to widen your stop loss slightly and reduce your risk slightly so that you're not getting stopped out of trades when you're not getting stopped out on your other accounts. Because it can get to the stage where some accounts you're passing when the others should be passed too, but then the trades didn't actually copy over correctly. And then you just have to pass twice, pretty much. You know, you don't want to miss out on these winning streaks because of the trade copier and the difference in price. You want to be able to capitalize on your wins. And obviously that is the, the main reason you're using a copier to win on all accounts if you do win. So if that's not happening, then you definitely need to look at some alternatives. Also, you need to look out for slippage. I've had slippage quite a lot of prop firms and I feel like most people watching will be trading with prop firms because with personal accounts, you only usually have you know, one or two accounts maybe, depending on how you're actually trading them. But this can vary because if you're using an FCA regulated broker, I very rarely have high spread, high slippage and issues that I actually would have on a prop firm. Same thing happened yesterday. I was on a prop firm, crazy slippage, my MT4 on my personal account, no slippage at all. And this is going to be different. So you need to be aware of this when you're actually trading on a copier. You need to consistently monitor the account balances because you'll know that every single prop firm has different rules, whether it's drawdown, whether it's max lot size, whether it's profit targets, news trading. These are all things you actually need to be aware of. I've seen countless times where people have actually passed on a few accounts, but then they actually traded through news and two of the accounts are actually prohibited to trade on news. So then those are breached. Or maybe one of the accounts only has a 3% max daily drawdown. The others have 5%. You're trading the master account thinking you're completely fine. You forget about the 3% drawdown, then you end up failing. If you don't consistently monitor the account balances, the equity to actually make sure all of the accounts are in line, maybe have the ones with 3% drawdown on a separate copier, 
bonds with 5% on the, the main copier and just trade them separately. If you're noticing patterns, split it up and just trade with two MT4s and just copy them over however you feel like works the best for you. And another thing which people sometimes forget, and I think it was social trader tools where this actually, it makes you do it, but you need to manually select to copy the stop loss and the take profit. Do not forget this because you don't want to be entering a trade and then you go and check your other account later on and the stop loss hasn't placed or the take profit hasn't placed and the trade is still running. This is gonna be a complete disaster. So make sure before you press activate trade copier that all the settings are correct. Your lot size multipliers are correct. Your stop loss and take profit are ticked. Your copy existing trades are ticked. All this needs to be set up properly before you actually go live because there's nothing worse than if you make one mistake, it then happens on five accounts. You know, that's irreversible. With trading, if you make a mistake, you can't make that money back. You can't delete that loss. That loss is there and it's there forever. Another thing is you have to check prop firm rules to see if they actually allow trade copying. I've had it before where I pass phase one, I pass phase two, and then the prop firm's like, oh, well, you were copy trading. Again, <laughs> if I read the rules, I would have obviously not not done this waste of time and waste of money but you know i should have checked the rules you know it's, it's always good to learn from others mistakes so you don't have to make them yourself so you've got double check the rules maybe ask their support team screenshot the message just in case they then suddenly say oh you you're not allowed to trade copy just make sure you have it so that you can prove that you're allowed to trade copy but the main benefits of trade copying is let's say you purchase 10 funded challenges you can pass 10 in one trade or you can pass 10 in one go. You know, I've used trade copies before where I link it my personal account to my funded challenges and any trades I take on my personal account, just copy over. So you're trading normally or you're trading with your personal account or your funded account and the profit you're making just slowly adds up and then it passes you funded challenges as a result. A lot of them now actually don't have time limits. So you could just buy a few challenges, put them on the trade copier, trade like you normally would. And maybe it will take a month or two months, but they'll just be there making profit slowly, even if you make 2% a month, within a couple of months, you could be able to pass these challenges without even having to fuss over sticking to the daily drawdown, sticking to the profit target. Because if you're trading normally, then you should be able to obviously adhere to the drawdown rules, the, the trading news rules or anything like this. And then you can uh, potentially pass more challenges with less time. You know, trading, you kind of don't want to be on challenge phases for too long because you're just trading demo, you're not getting any money out of it. If you're trading those same trades that you're trading on the challenge, also on a personal account, then you're making money whilst also passing a challenge. So you want to get on the funded stage as quickly as possible because otherwise you're just doing work for free. You're just trading for free. You're getting nothing out of it. You've actually just paid to trade with no return unless you're on the funded stage. So definitely if you can, if you can afford to do so and it's not going to you know, bankrupt you if you do fail, maybe buy a couple, put it on the, the, the copier to pass multiple at once. But yeah. If you guys did enjoy, like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next video.